Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church on this fifth Sunday of Easter and Mother's Day. We wish all mothers and caregivers a very happy and blessed day. Thank you for joining us. Concerning this day, as we continue to celebrate the 50 days of Easter, Today's gospel includes Jesus' promise that he goes to prepare a place for his followers in his Father's house. Our baptism commissions us to share Jesus' mission in the world. As 1 Peter reminds us, we are a holy people called to proclaim the one who called us out of darkness into light. In words and deeds, we bear witness to the risen Christ our way, our truth, and our life. We will now sing hymn 554 in the Green Book. This is my Father's work, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and This is my Father's world, I rest me in the fog of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, His hand the wonders wrought. This is my Father's world, the birds their carols raise, the morning light, the lily This is my Father's world, He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear Him pass, He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world, Oh, let me not forget that though the so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King, let the heavens reign, God reigns, let the earth be glad. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As you approach the throne of grace, let us bring to mind our sin. <clears throat> our favorite love of God, with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, we confess, saying, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Our favorite love, our neighbor as ourself, we confess, saying, Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Our desire, desire, end of life, we express, saying, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, forgive us our sins, strengthen our resolve, and bring us to life eternal. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also so with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading for today is from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants, Long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God 
through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. In order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Here ended the reading for the day. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Our gospel is written in the Gospel of St. John's, St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We certainly know the words of this gospel reading very well because they are used almost at every memorial service, every funeral, every time when we say farewell to a loved one. I go to prepare a place for you. These are words of great comfort and great reassurance that, as I say, we all know so well, having heard them so many times over the years. As human beings, we are creatures composed of two, of two elements. There, there, of course, the physical aspect of our lives, our bodies, whether they be young or old, well or sick, what have you, they are still God's gift to us, and we should take care of them. That's only good stewardship. But then there's also the spiritual aspect. Now, we know that the body will grow old and decay and return to dust, as Scripture says, because that's just the nature of bodies. But within us, within the body, the 
tent of a body is the soul, as we call it. And that is the divine spark of us. And as the body goes back to dust over time, the soul, by God's grace, matures and grows and becomes even ever more alive with time's passage. I go and prepare a place for you. Again, what a comfort that is to all of us as we hear this said at services and memorial and funerals, as I say. So, I think right now in the history of, history of the world, we are not preoccupied with death, but it seems ever closer with the pandemic that is ravaging the world, certainly our own country, our own state. In fact, I had a, a call a couple of weeks ago from a benefactor of St. Paul's Church who said he was leaving, uh, mentioning us in a trust he has, and wanted to know something about uh, the church and where all the funds go uh, when parishes are dissolved and so on and so forth. But he was thinking about his mortality. And I think that that is something, as I say, that many of us think more about now than we have before. What is life beyond death, physical death, really like? Well, back our presiding bishop, Eaton, said that it's, it's hard to describe, but you know and you should know that after death we are with Christ, even closer to Christ. So I think when we think about the place that the Lord's preparing for us, I would just share a few thoughts with you. And I would take the word place, I prepare a place for you, and take each letter of that word place and think about it and how it relates to what we can expect, what we look forward to in the life of the world to come. Of course, the first letter Place is, of course, peace, peace. So we know that life beyond the grave is a life of tranquility, rest, and peace. In fact, we often use that word, don't we? May he rest in peace, may she rest in peace. It's a, an existence where all the troubles, the anxieties, the stresses of this life are forgotten and set aside, and there's this perfect peace. May he, may she rest in peace, we often pray for our departed loved ones. It's a place of peace. Then, of course, it's a place, let the L stand for light. It's, the place is a place of light, where we see things as they really are. We only have a glimpse of ultimate reality in this world, and um, St. Paul says in Corinthians, as you know, in this life we see through a glass darkly. We only have an outline of what reality, ultimate reality really is. But in the place that Christ prepares for us, it's a place of light, illumination. All the darkness of this world is banished, and we see things, we see ourselves as we really, really are, see God as he really is. I always quote St. Augustine in memorial services and funerals where he says, in death we come to know God as he even now knows us. We know him perfectly as God knows us now. St. Paul even before that says, in death, now I, in death I come to know fully. And he says, Paul says, in this life we know partially, but in death we know fully. We know as we are really known as I say a place of light, a place where things are clear. Then let the A stand for answers. This is my, one of my favorite ones, answers. There are so many questions in life and so few answers, I often say. Why do bad things happen to really good people? Why is there so much heartache, strife? hurt, evil, in this world. I've been, uh, since I'm at home quite a bit now, as we all are, uh, watching uh, various channels, and there's, a, I forget the name of the 
Shan, but it deals with wars and, and uh, tyrants like Hitler and Stalin and so on. And they're old uh, movies that were, took place many years ago. And these poor people, the things they have to endure are just almost hard to believe that really happened to people. And we have these questions again. Why, why, why? And we get so few answers, as I say, in this world, but in the life of the world to come, in that place where Christ has gone to prepare a place for us, there will be answers. Then let the C stand for comfort. Comfort. Recall the story of Lazarus and Dives, the rich man, and how the rich man has everything in this world that he won't even uh, let the poor man, Lazarus, uh, have the crumbs that fall from his table. And in the afterlife, uh, Lazarus uh, is comforted. And with, uh, as it says in Abraham's bosom, a way of describing uh, the place where Christ is speaking about uh, the life of the world to come. <clears throat> and uh, he says, Lazarus says, well, our, our Dives says, the rich man says, well, uh, let Lazarus come down and uh, cool my tongue with some water from his finger. And uh, the Lord says, no, he is com Lazarus is comforted here. He had the evil things in life, but now he is comforted. Now, not that we, if we have good things in this life, we're not destined to have an a, a end like uh, Dives, the rich man. But the point is, we, we all want comfort. We all desire comfort. And we do have certain kinds of comfort in this world, in this life. But in the life of the world to come, as is said about uh, Lazarus, he's comforted here. He's embraced. He feels he's, he's where he needs to be. He has no more wants. And uh, life is good in the sense that it should be good. And then the final E in uh, place, let us stand for ecstasy. Now, I sometimes hate to use this word ecstasy because it's connected with, I guess, certain kinds of drugs and certain kinds of emotional feelings, but if you look up the word ecstasy in the dictionary, it means overwhelming joy, ecstasy, overwhelming joy. And that is one way to describe that place that Christ has prepared for us. Overwhelming joy, joy we cannot possibly imagine in this life. So there we have it, the place. And we strive for that, knowing that Christ is working with us. And the main thing we have to take from this is the fact that, yes, we are born, we live in this world for a while, but physical death, from our Christian perspective, is not the end of our existence. Yes, the body, which is growing older every day, will return to dust or ashes. But the spirit of God within us, the divine spark, the soul, will go on to know God better, to be with God, to be comforted by God. And so in the midst of these difficult times, where death seems to be more around us than it has been in recent years, we take great solace in these truths about that place Christ goes to prepare for us. Dust to dust of the body, from God to God for the soul. We came into the world, we go out of the world, but we have a place prepared for us where the Lord is in his fullness and where he wants us to be. Amen. Confident that the resurrection of Christ has defeated sin and death, we offer our prayers for the church and all in need. For the mission of the church throughout the world, that all be led by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news that God is love. For all bishops, pastors, and lay leaders, let us pray. Hear us, Lord. For the right use of creation, that we know ourselves as stewards of all that God provides. Let us pray. Hear us, Lord. For all in positions of authority, that they work for justice, 
to the end that all peoples may be treated with fairness and equity. For our President and Congress, Governor and Legislature, let us pray. Hear us, Lord. For those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name before you now in our hearts. And for those who provide care and comfort to them, that all may find assurance of God's unending love, let us pray. Hear us, Lord. For our faith community of St. Paul's, that the Holy Spirit work mightily among us so that each of us grows in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray. Hear us, Lord. For the remembrance of all who have died in Christ, especially those most dear to us, whom we now name in our hearts. That light perpetual shine upon them, let us pray. Hear us, Lord. For our nation and the world, as we endure the trials of this present coronavirus pestilence, that we may all be comforted, sustained, and upheld. Let us pray. Hear us, Lord. Into your hands, O God, we commend all whom we pray, trusting your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Lord, who art Lord, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor, favor and give you his peace now and forevermore in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn today is number 501. <clears throat> 501. He beat it to me. In 501. <clears throat> He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort brought. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand. His faithful power I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Sometimes this seems a deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom. By waters calm or troubled sea, still tis God's hand that me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful power I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Lord, I would clasp thy hand in mine, nor
even death's cold I will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful power I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.